Join us for a message already in progress. Thank you for tuning in today, Broadcast World Partners. Thank you for tuning in, and we thank you for you being here today. Thank you, PVMCIers, and our guests who are in the studio today for tuning in as we go to another installment of the word. But I want to go straight in today, and I want to tell you straight away what today's subject matter would be. And today's subject matter would be friend. So, well, oh, friend, oh, what does that mean? Uh, yeah, that's what I say. Well, what does that mean? I don't have any of those. You know, friends are difficult to find. You might think you have a friend, but not really. Amen. Yeah, yes. The Bible talks about too many friends could be dangerous. Mm. And everybody's not your friend. Oh, hallelujah. But I want to get spiritual and I want to talk in the flesh for a minute. And then I want to get completely spiritual about this friend thing. Friends are not easy to come by. And I'm going to tell you straight away, for as long as I've been alive, I probably had maybe one friend. <laughs> one. Because a friend is not somebody who, who, who goes along with the things that we do that are wrong. Did you know that a true friend is somebody who would straighten you out? A true friend, ladies, is not somebody who would tell you to keep that baby from that parent because you're hurt. No, that's not a true friend. That's somebody who wants to see you go down. I got some definitions for you today. And because I wanted to define this, b b because, because I was talking to my wife, because, because I talked to her a, a lot, and I said, baby, do you know what frenemy means? And she said, yeah. Frenemy means somebody who pretends to be your friend. And I said, you know, it goes a lot further than that. So I defined friend for you to today, and those of you who are watching today. The definition Webster gives for friend is a person attached to another by feelings of affection or personal regard. So I looked in Webster and I found the definition for frenemy. I didn't think it was in there. So Webster now has frenemy. So I looked up the word frenemy because I wanted to know what it meant completely. And it doesn't just mean somebody who pretends to be your friend. No, nah, no, no, no. It's a, it, 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 it goes a lot deeper. Before we get into scripture today, I wanted to cover these two definitions because that's our subject matter today. Friend, not S with an S, but friend. Difficult to find. So the definition for frenemy would be informal. A person or group that is friendly toward another because the relationship brings benefit. I was kind of ugly. I felt insulted. What? With a couple of W's before the H. But harbors, oh, oh, wait, 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 it gets deep. We could go over this definition and go on home. Tuned in. We can go over this definition and you can watch somebody else today. But right now, I want to go friend of me because you need to get it in your spirit. So maybe you won't be walking around hurt so much when you thought that somebody was really for you when actually they were trying to burn you down. <laughs> okay, let's go in. Friend of me, informal, a personal group that is friendly toward another because the relationship brings benefits. Now, there's, th there's a, a comma right there, and then it says, but harbors feelings of resentment or rivalry. Resentment or resi means I really didn't like you in the first place. I'm just pretending to be around you because you got something I need. Some of y'all met some members of the opposite sex like that. You got something I need. Uh -huh. you, you got something I need. <laughs> and, and, and you met them. 
I'm not sorry about the music because it was in there. <laughs> okay. You, 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 you got something I need, but I really hate you. The word rivalry depicts competition. No, 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 no. A frenemy is not someone who's with you, but is secretly competing with you. Would you like to know why a lot of relationships don't make it? Because y'all, can I mess up the English language just for a tad? Because y'all be being in competition. That's two B's put together in the wrong place. <laughs> Y'all be being in competition, so that's why you can't get along. Because you can't see her make it, and she can't see him make it. Because you got to make it before they make it, when you forgot that you were supposed to make it together. Watch it now. Oh, somebody learned something today. <laughs> okay, I got that out. <laughs> Let's go into the word. <laughs> now that I've grabbed my sword, there's about to be some trouble on the horizon. I've given you my spill of a friend. But now we're about to go to the Word of God as Proverbs, and to Proverbs as, I, I hate cliches and I never use them, but in Proverbs, Solomon Agur and Lumuel, uh, they, 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 they wrote a piece of scripture that I wanted to use before we get into an in-depth, stretched amount of scripture. And, and Proverbs 18, and 24, the author writes, which one was it? The author writes, he says, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. So for those of you who want a friend, you got to act like you want a friend. But the problem with a lot of us is we don't know how to choose friends. We think any and everybody is our friend until that stuff hit the fan. You know the stuff that stinks and it hits the fan? And I don't know how it got to my fan in the first place, but it stinks. 24, 18, 24 says, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Did you know that? Did you know that some of us got friends who stick closer to us than our brothers and sisters ever would from the blood, from moms and dads, friends. Now, this is biblical. It said, it said there are friends that stick closer to us than our brothers and sisters, which is absolute true. I am a witness of that. I'm, I'm fortunate to have my children in ministry today. Because there's a lot of us who don't have our children in ministry today because there's a word that is in the definition of frenemy, which is called rivalry. And because of rivalries, many of us in the clergy don't have our families helping us because you're too busy competing with your brothers and your sisters to help. You cannot be an effectual help in competition with me. And the reason why a lot of sons and fathers don't get along is because of rivalry. The reason why a lot of brothers and sisters don't get along is because of rivalries, competitions, and resentments betwixt the two, three, or four. So we're talking today concerning a friend. And I'm here to tell you uh, from experience and a true witness that friends are not easy to come by. Oh no. And please don't call everybody your friend. If you got a group of folk and they all call themselves your friends, somebody gonna kill you today. <laughs> Somebody's gonna take you out today. You thought all those people were your friends and that's not entirely always true. 
but we've got to learn how to choose the correct people to be around us at the right time. And many times, God will set you up with the right kind of people in your life. A friend is not somebody who's with you every minute of the day. You might have a friend who's been your friend for the last 30 years, but they live in another city. But whenever you need somebody to talk to, they're there. When, when you need somebody, they're right there. And not necessarily with you every minute of the day. Friends are not easy to come by. Now, I wanted to go, before I go into the scripture, we're going to be uh, over in John, the son of Zebedee, the son, one of the original disciples or apostles, the son of Zebedee in chapter 15. Now, you said, why are you going to 15, some of you Bible thumpers and scholars? Because I'd like to go through a gaggle of scripture so we'll understand where we're going, properly exegeting the scripture and not using one and hooping you home. I want to go through some scripture so that we can get something in our spirit today before we go home, something to chew on, something to gnaw on us when we go home today, something that might pull something out of us and realize who we are in Christ, who Christ is to us. So I want to go into John, who's the son of Zebedee, one of the original apostles who walked with Jesus, and he's writing one of Jesus' moves and a conversation that Jesus had. And in chapter 15, he talks about the vine and the branches. And somebody say, what does this have to do with friends? Jesus is my Lord and Savior, not my friend. And somebody said, well, I don't understand where you're coming from, brother, right there, because Jesus said, oh, I'm a friend. Yeah, but I'm not calling him a friend. Because what I remember and recognize is every friendship that you and I have ever had, we have abused. Every person who we've ever called a friend, we drop dead mad at them if they say something to us that is out of line. If we call them a friend, because that's personal. And, and I'm not going to have you speaking to me like this, friend. You're in my business, friend. And, and the reason why I don't call him my friend is because he's my Lord and Savior, because he puts me in check. And I found out that I treat friends kind of bad when they try to put me in check. You ever wonder why pastors don't have friends? And everybody's under them and everybody works. You, know, you got to be under me, bro. Because you got to be under me because I don't want you to tell me when I'm wrong. And, 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 and this friendship thing goes deep. Someone who you call a friend is someone who you refuse to tell the truth. Many of us want to have folk around us who we call friends who are like us. If we're bank robbers, I'm not going to have somebody who's not a bank robber. My friends need to be bank robber. If I'm a killer... Or, or whatever I feel like doing that's against anything else, the people who are around me who I call my friends must agree with what I think. But a proper friend would not agree with what you think. A real friend would not let you do anything that you felt like doing without putting you in check. An actual friend. Why did, why did I use the ladies? I can use some men. Well, you know, we're men, and we're supposed to treat them that way. As men, we're supposed to conquer and divide. Right, men? Right, 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 yeah, 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 right, 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 right yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but there is one friend who will say, no, that's not the way we're supposed to do it, man. Well, I'm going to tell you what, G, you go home, because see, you ain't with us, see, because you won't think like us, G, so you can't hang out with us, G. Which is the same manner with the girls. You know how they are. We're supposed to do them in. And then there's one godly woman there that said, I'm not with y'all with that mess. And then there's somebody who would say, well, you got to go home because you don't think like us. Well, Jesus is not my friend. He's my Lord and Savior. And by him being my Lord and Savior means I can hear him. 
I can listen to him. And I still get mad at him. We get the worst mad at our friends. We get the worst. Some people who were supposed to be our friends, we are no longer their friends anymore because they didn't agree on something that we thought they should have agreed on. This is why friendships are taken out of proportion. The minute I don't let you do what, I, what you think you, that I should have allowed you to do, we are no longer cool, no more. That's a friend for you. But I found that friendships must be unconditional. If you're a true friend, you're going to be an unconditional true friend. If I see you in a fart, I'm going to say, man, that's not cool. A true friend will tell you that's not cool. An unconditional friend will see you at a fallen state and pick you up. A frenemy will kick dirt in your face. A true friend will watch you about to fall into a hole and say, wait, and grab you by a collar. A true friend will see you stepping off the curve, texting and walking, and there's a bus coming and catch you by the collar. You say, man, you just messed up my shirt. No, I just saved your life. But a friend of me will let you fall in the hole and laugh. <laughs> and you done broke both your legs. A friend of me will let you get hit by that dress, by that dress, by that bus and drug down the street. You on the critical list. And they say, I'm so sorry, but you could have stopped me from getting hit by the bus. You had enough reaching room to grab me by the scruff of my collar and save my life. But you friend of me, and now next to my hospital bed with some flowers talking about, I'm so sorry this happened. What you mean you so sorry this happened? You knew that if I kept in my way that I was going to stumble up pretty soon? You knew that if I kept doing what I was doing the way I was doing, that something bad was going to happen to me? You knew this. But as a friend, as you said that you were, you didn't say anything. Some of us need to start evaluating who we call friends and recognize a frenemy. Because if you've got a frenemy that have watched you stumble and fall and break your leg when they could have stopped this thing from happening, that's a frenemy. I love Jesus so much because he's not a friend of me. He's a true friend. See, but I don't call him friend. I call him Lord and Savior. But, but what's weird is that he calls me friend. And but, but the thing about the friend of Jesus is that his friendship is unconditional. It's, it doesn't matter what I do. He loves me. It didn't. He didn't say no matter what I do, he lets me get away with it. No, no matter what I do, he loves me through what I'm going through. And as a, okay, okay, okay. For some of you who are parents watching today, and some of you who are parents in the studio today, if you become a friend to your child, they will not respect you. They will kick you in your knee and say, shut up. And if you don't catch them from way down yonder, by the time they get up there, they're going to be popping you in the eye. Now, what did I tell you? I told you not to tell me what to do. I hate you, Mom! It sounds real. It's real. It's because nobody didn't, nobody put that child in check when they was coming up. You was too busy being a friend, and you weren't a parent. And what I like about Jesus so much is that he's busy being a parent and not my friend. He calls himself my friend as in love and, 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 and adoring me, but he's actually a parent. Let's go into the Word. We got a lot of Word to read in a couple of minutes. Before we get to the juicy stuff, I'm going to go through some Word with you right quick so we recognize where we're coming from and what Jesus is saying before we get to the meat of this gaggle of Scripture. Let's go in. John chapter 15, as he talks about the vine and the branches, he says, I am th the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, oh, this is getting deep right now, every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. Are you listening here in, in, in here today, Christian? Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. 
and every branch <coughs> that bears fruit, he purges it. Now, I got a little upset when I read this because I'm working like a dog, God. I'm working like a dog on your work. I'm working like a dog evangelizing on your people. And are you going to cut me even though I'm working? Do you know what purges means? Purging? Have you ever purged a flower? The flower was pretty in here. You go cutting on it. Purging and pruning is the same thing. Purging and pruning is the same thing. Cutting off that that may be stinking or dying or wilting. Okay. Let's go back in. He says, he says, he says, he says, every branch in me that, 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 that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges, he, he cuts on it anyway. He, he, he shapes it anyway. He works on it anyway. And you might think you're perfect because you're doing so much in God, but he's about to cut on you some more. You might think you're getting it on. You're putting it in. You're turning it up in the name of Jesus, but he's going to cut on you some more. Some more. I got New York. Putting it in. Put it. Okay, my New York people say, nope, that's not the right accent. I'm going to get it one day. I'm going to get it. Okay, back to the word. I got upset because I didn't have a New York accent. I do apologize, New York watchers. <laughs> Three. He says, now you are clean through the word, which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, John writes that Jesus said, except it abides in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. That's why he keeps on pruning us. A flower, pruning, purging, uh, dragging stuff out of us. Because even though we work hard in the name of Jesus, we always get those burrs on us. Snotty stuff, goo, gum, dirt, scurvy, bruised, and stuff get inside of us and on us. And we can be working the work of Jesus Christ, and suddenly something ugly gets on us. So he must continuously work on us to keep us producing fruit. Oh, this is good stuff. I'm learning something today. He, he must keep working on us to keep us producing because sometimes we get lazy. And we, you ain't brought nobody to Christ now in 12 years. <laughs> When's the last time you talked somebody into Jesus? Oh, this is good stuff. I'm talking to myself. Amen. If, if you get in my way, you going to know about Jesus. Especially if you come at me with a problem, you in trouble. Did you know G? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to pronounce the name. You know what I'm talking about. You know. Okay, let's go back here. <laughs> I have to get you straight. And 60 says, we got some reading to do. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. If you don't abide in Jesus, if you don't abide in Jesus and, 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 and is withered and, 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 and men gather them and cast them in the fire and they are burned. Uh, somebody's in the fire today and you're being burned. Perhaps God's burning off some of that junk. Could be. Or maybe you're not producing and getting boink. Real bad because you're just sitting there doing nothing and you want to call yourself in him and he in you. But if you're in him and he being in you, you've got to start producing. Somebody watching, if you be in him and he be being in you, you've got to start producing. Sally. And if you abide in me and 
and, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you, for you, unto you. Herein is my Father glorified. Somebody said, why are you going over all that when we talk about friends today? You need to straighten out your lettering and your, your verbiage so I can understand what you just said. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Why are you reading all of this? I'm coming to it. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. Now, here's the part that gets kind of sticky. Because you might remember this in the Old Testament. Now, right now we dwell in the New Testament. But you might remember this in the Old Testament. Here we go. And then he says, if you keep my commandments, Jesus is saying this. He said, if you keep my commandments, what? Jesus, he said, if you keep my commandments, and, and commandments mean mandate, statutes, commandments, mandates. He says, if you keep my mandates, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So I'm expecting for you to keep my mandates just as I have kept my father's mandates. So you still ain't got to the part yet about friends. I know you're talking about friends today, but you still ain't got to that part yet. Oh, we coming. It's coming. It's coming. 11 says, these things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, my mandate. Jesus says. Now this gets kind of sticky because I remember reading this in the Old Testament where you commanded or mandated me to love my brother. Come in. Well, Jesus? Oh. Jeba? Are you saying the same thing that God said? In which you are God in the flesh? Hi, I'm Prophetess Angela K. Morris, and I'd just like to thank you for tuning in to PD Ministries on today. I hope you enjoyed the message, friends. That's a great subject, and it's something to really think about. But what I would like to talk to you today about is you becoming a friend with us. If Apostle Daryl W. Morris's messages have been a blessing to you, then we need your support to take this word around the world. You can go to www broadcast-world.com and you can become a partner, you can make a donation, or you can just plant a seed. But we need your help to get this word out. And I just want to leave you with this final word is that when you get down to pray, don't get up right away. Listen. See you next week.